Hi everyone, my name is Lorianne, and in this video we are going to be working on lesson planning. Three tips on how you can streamline your lesson planning and hopefully not spend so many hours on the weekend doing it. And stick around till the end because we are giving away a TPT gift card to one special teacher as a thank you. A thank you to all of you for being part of the It's All Primary team. Stay tuned. So when it comes to lesson planning, unless you are super efficient with your to-do list, I would highly recommend you not put it on your to-do list, but to actually schedule your lesson planning into your day. We have so many things that we need to do and what ends up happening with our to-do list is that we tick off the things that we can do quickly and then before you know it, it is Friday and you have your lesson planning still sitting there on your to-do list and it ends up happening on the weekend. And with a couple little tweaks to your day, it is possible to get your lesson planning done during the week so you can go home on the weekend and spend time with your family and your friends at a social distance, of course. In order to schedule it properly into our week, we need to be able to figure out how long it takes you to do your lesson plan. I mean, and we're talking lesson planning without distractions, without people visiting you, without uh, checking your social media, right? Just straight lesson planning. So let's just say lesson planning takes four to eight weeks. This will vary on your grade and the amount of subjects that you are required to teach. Also, don't be looking for one long stretch of time. For example, if you're thinking, oh, I'll just stay after school until, you know, 6, 8, 10 o'clock at night to finish. That. Don't do that. Schedule your lesson planning over three, four, maybe even five days and do it in chunks. And when you do it in chunks, you want to be having a focus for every single chunk of time. Block maybe 40 minutes, three to four times for a start and use each of those times as some, for something very specific. So you're staying focused on one particular thing and by staying focused on one particular thing, the chances of you getting it done are pretty high. The thing is with teachers, we are always thinking about something other than what we're supposed to be working on. You can still be thinking about what's happening, what has happened during the day, what you think is going to happen tomorrow. Maybe you got an email that up, it upset you or bothered you. We are constantly, we've got all these things in our mind and we keep revisiting them time and time again. And it's, it's damaging the, the moment that you're in. So put yourself in the moment, shut off, shut the door, turn off your phone or anything else that beeps and just focus. Put all your attention into that task that you choose. So the first task that I tend to do is I look at my course overview, uh, unit plans, and any scope and sequence that I'm using as part of a curriculum that the school requires us to teach. For example, something like math. So I create a course overview at the beginning of the year and it really is just telling me these are the units that I want to do, these are the field trips I want to go on, um, these are the some of the books that I would like to highlight. You know, it's general stuff, but it keeps me moving forward on this is the end goal. <laughs> I try to get into a habit of spending, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes looking at it, looking at every subject and using it as a live document. So it's not one and done and on the shelf and I never look at it again. It is done and then I keep tweaking it and I write notes and I I look at different aspects of it thinking okay am I going to finish this unit two weeks early do I need to fit something else down the road right oh I just found out about this field trip this virtual field trip that I might be able to squeeze in so I'm looking at different little things and again if you look at it at least once a week the time you spend on it, it becomes shorter because you are constantly updating it. The same as if you are following, say, a school-directed math curriculum, open up the scope and sequence of that math and look at what you're about to do and look what's coming down the road, just so you can get an idea of maybe some things that you're going to want to do. And always have 
a notebook or a notes opened up on your computer, whatever it is that you use to take notes and just start writing little notes down. What I like to do sometimes is I like to um, take a paper version of a day plan and just start writing notes in as I'm as I'm reading through some things going, oh, I want to remember to do that. And I will put it in here for now. And then I will use that later on when I'm actually going through my lesson planning. <laughs> I'm going to show you a few different layouts for uh, course overviews or unit plans that um, some of these are mine. Some of these are teachers that gave me copies. So as I mentioned, one of the things I like to do is do a course overview. And I just did this in Google Docs. And I put uh, the months across any, and I put any themes that I'm working on. And then down the side, this was a grade one, two class. I have all the subjects and then I put in all the learning outcomes, core competencies, big ideas that I want to cover again through the year. And this is, this is the live document and then any field trips or special events. So that is the um, overview. Okay, another way to do your overview is this one. This is also a, uh, a Word doc, and this is just straight grade one. And again, just putting in the content competencies, curricular competencies, language arts, math, career education, and they're all in here, social studies, science, art, and they're just all done in boxes. And again, then term two. So they went for term one, term two, and you can highlight them as you complete them. All right, so this was done by a colleague, term three. And that, this is an easy way to do it too, um, putting down the all of the competencies. That was a bit of work for the teacher, but again, you do what's gonna work for you in a document that you will use. Some of the other ones I've got here in front of me, hang on. This one is a course overview that I created a few years, a couple years ago. This one is just on language arts. What am I gonna cover in language arts over the year? So I've got my main objectives, and then these are different competencies that need to be addressed, learning experiences, assessment, resources, right? So this is just a general language arts unit, sort of a unit plan or subject plan. And, and we were required to do these for all subjects. Another teacher did her overviews this way. So this one, I just, I just asked for a copy of her language arts and math. So she broke it down, sorry, by month, and then uh, she broke down the language arts into the phonics reading, re read and write, which is a program we have, and writing, and then her math. There is no one way to have to do something some teachers set them up in their calendars. This teacher did each week, and I've seen that done with a few teachers, and what is done each day, really breaking it down. And then this last one I wanna show you is one that I'm doing right now in the classroom because I teach blended, and this is an agenda that is actually sent out to the parents Fridays for the coming week. So I break down where the, all the different online rooms the kids need to be in, and I sometimes just tell them, bring a, you know, bring your math book, bring your, your journal book, bring your papers for various things. If they're coming in, in class for the blended days, what I'll be covering. But I don't, I don't give them specifics. Just some things that, it's just, just subject areas. And then heads up for what's happening next week. I always have a little weekly note of anything to cover. And then I give them a choice board because there's a couple afternoons where they're not with me. So I give them ideas of what they could be working on. So those are just some ideas of documents that you could use in the classroom. Again, when it comes to lesson planning, you've got to go with what works for you. Whether you are paper or digital, find a system. Which brings us tip number two, and that is try batching your planning. If you are a generalist teacher, which means you teach pretty much every subject except for the ones that are say preps such as music, art, uh, library, PE sometimes. It's worth trying to focus on 
lesson planning for just one subject at a time. Try focusing on either one subject or one unit, particularly if it's integrated, at one time. And I always like to start with math because for me, it's very straightforward. So based on the notes that I've taken when I'm going back through the scope and sequence or the course overview, I start filling in each day. So I literally have all five days in front of me and I start writing out or typing out, depending if I'm in front of the computer. I will type out each of the stuff each of the things that I want to do for math that week. And I keep a column over here for things such as photocopying, manipulatives that I will eventually need to get or make. And I'll highlight them. But all I'm want, wanting to do is like, what is the actual lesson? What is the actual content? I'm not going to focus on, oh, do I have an anchor chart for this? Oh, do I need, uh, what, what, do, how, you know, I got to go run to the photocopier and make these photocopies. I'm not focused on that yet. All I'm doing is focusing on the content for each of the subjects. So I do math Monday to Friday, and then I move on to language arts, science, social studies. I, I teach PE, so PE, visual art, nutrition, right? I go through them all. I don't usually do this in one sitting. I actually do this, in, you, I can usually do this in two sittings because not every subject is going to be taught every single week. Language arts and math are taught every single day, but some of the other ones, we don't even have to teach them every month. So uh, it's, it's not always as bad as it sounds like with all the, all the subjects that you're required to teach. So I usually do that part in two days. I will some, right now because of COVID and we're, I don't usually leave my classroom for recess or for lunch. I I'm usually working on them in small chunks during that time. And I keep all my day plans in a binder. This was actually re required one year at a school I was at. And I, I kind of liked having it because there are times of the year when I will refer back to these. And it actually speeds up my lesson planning when I feel a little bit stuck. I look back and say, oh, I did that. Okay, let's just do it again. Now I've heard teachers say that they don't like to lesson plan a week ahead of time because if they, you know, suddenly get done much earlier than they were planning on it, then they've got to change all their plans. And I'm thinking that happens. That doesn't happen a ton of times. It does happen, but I find it's for me because it's online. It's a copy paste. It's, it's not a big deal. Thing is, sometimes I'm very thankful that I planned ahead because I usually have the photocopies ready. And if the kids are finishing something much faster, I can quickly go grab the next day's photocopies and actually do some of that stuff that I had planned for the next day. I can do it there and I don't feel, uh, you know, flustered going, what am I going to do for the next 20 minutes, right? And that brings us to tip number three. Try to schedule a time where you are photocopying for the week and getting the materials that you need for the week. So like I said, I usually will make comments along on the side here and highlight them, usually in yellow, of photocopies that I'll need to make, whether I gotta pull out an anchor chart, whether I gotta grab some manipulatives, and I will do that ahead of time. I can't tell you how many times that I've gone into the math resource room and I'm looking for analog clocks or you know, looking for base 10 blocks and they aren't there. And I'm, you know, and I made that decision to wait until the recess before math and I can't find them. And it is so frustrating and stressful. So let's not do that to ourselves. Let's make a list of the things that you need and get them together and put them in your room so that they're ready to go. The other advantage of photocopying ahead of time, <laughs> and many of you know this, how many times have you gone to the photocopier and there's either this long lineup of people or it's not working? Both of those scenarios happened this week alone. I went to do my week's photocopying on Friday and sure enough, yes, on Friday during my prep, photocopier was down and the technician was there and I'm like, oh, I want to get this done before I go home on the weekend. And so I left and I decided, okay, let's plan a little bit more ahead and I came back and he was just finishing as I, and I stepped into the room and I got my photocopying done. 
And I, and I have to tell you, it is a great feeling when you can leave on a Friday afternoon, even if it's, you know, maybe an hour after your contract hours, knowing that your day plan is sitting on your desk for Monday. You've got your photocopies close by. You've got the manipulatives or the materials that you need close by. I mean, I always think about it this way. It's not so stressful on the weekend if I'm sick because everything is laid out for Monday, which doesn't usually happen. But what it does do for me is it gives me this reason to really enjoy the weekend without having to think that I got to do a lesson plan. Because if I have to do lesson plans, honestly, I'll, you know, I mean, never mind. <laughs> You don't want to be doing lesson plans so rushed. One of the other things I do also notice by having them done ahead of time, once in a while I come up with a really cool idea that will work and it, and it comes naturally because I wasn't so stressed out trying to create my lesson plans on the weekend or the night before. So having your lesson plans done gives you the reason to celebrate on the weekend. And speaking of celebrating, It's All Primary is celebrating 200 subscribers. And I just want to say thank you. It has meant so much to me. When I started It's All Primary in September 2019, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I was I was so um, nervous about doing this. I mean, I wanted to help teachers, but I thought, what if I'm horrible <laughs> or, you know, I just, I just thought terrible things. And so as a thank you, I want to give away a $10 TPT gift card to some special teacher. So to enter, what you need to do is you need to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and make a comment below uh, and do two things in that comment. One, say you're subscribed, and two, either tell me what you would do with that $10 gift card or Maybe you have an idea of for an upcoming video. And I will notify the winner next week. I'd like to do it before Halloween, so it'll probably happen about the 28th of October. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell so that you are notified on upcoming videos. I try to upload a video either Tuesdays or Saturdays, and sometimes both days. And I'm also going to be doing a future giveaway for Christmas. So that ends this video. Thanks so much for watching again. Be sure to subscribe and enter for the giveaway, and we will see you in the coming video. Take care, everyone.